Unit 15, Inflation, Unemployment and Monetary Policy. Inflation is one of the most important macroeconomic variables. It is almost always in the news. And especially after the recent pandemic, economists are discussing the possibility of return of high inflation rates. What is inflation? It is the rate at which prices change in the economy. Who changes the prices? Firms do. But why do they change the prices? To understand that, we need to scroll down and go to unit 15.3. Inflation, the business cycle, and the Phillips curve. Let's scroll down. This conceptual graph captures the process that leads to inflation, the causal chain that generates inflation. And we covered each of these boxes separately in some of the units that we have discussed so far. Let me start backward. Inflation happens when firms decide to increase the price of goods and services. But why they increase their price of goods and services when they encounter an increase in their cost of production. And one of the elements, one of the elements that increases the cost of production is the increase in wages. But what drives the increase in wages? A bargaining gap. Bargaining gap kicks off this whole causal chain. And in order to understand this concept, we need to go to our price setting and wage setting curve that captures the whole economy at the aggregate level. So let's scroll down. On top, you have the wage setting and price setting curve that we covered in unit nine. This model captures the whole economy at the aggregate level. And then below, you have the Phillips curve, which we'll get to it later on. But for the moment, notice that the shape of the wage setting curve and the Phillips curve are very similar. And as you will find out later, this is no coincidence. But how does this model capture the process of inflation? Let's start with the situation where the economy is at the equilibrium level of employment. At this level of employment, neither the workers nor the firm have an incentive to change their behaviors. The workers don't have an incentive to demand higher wages and the firms don't have an incentive to change prices. So at this level of employment, the prices are stable. In other words, the inflation is zero. Let's assume for whatever reason you have a positive demand shock in the economy. Again, everything starts with a positive demand shock for whatever random reason. People start to buy more and more goods and services. In reaction, the firms have to increase their production and therefore they start to hire more and more workers. The employment level goes up. At this new level of employment, a bargaining gap opens up. On the one hand, the firms need to pay higher nominal wages to their workers to keep them motivated as before at this new level of employment. So they increase the nominal wages. But on the other hand, this reduces their profits. Why? Because they have increased the nominal wage and the prices have remained the same. So the markups have gone down for firms while the overall level of competitiveness in the economy has stayed the same. So the profits go down. In order to counteract that, the firms start to increase their prices in order to keep the markups the same and maximize their profit. And this process creates inflation. So let me go through it again. You had a positive demand shock in the economy. The employment rate goes up. At this new level of employment, the firms need to increase the nominal wages to keep the workers motivated as before. But once they increase the nominal wages, they also increase the prices to keep the mock-ups as the same as before. And this creates inflation. Now, the Phillips curve captures all the story that I told you. This curve shows that in the short to medium term, there is a positive relationship between employment and inflation rate. Higher employment goes hand in hand with 
higher inflation in the economy. Now we can think about the exact opposite case of a negative demand shock. For whatever reason, households and firms start to spend less in the economy. Firms cut down their production, therefore the employment rate in the economy goes down. At this new level of employment rate, the firms reduces the nominal wages because at this lower nominal wage, they can keep the workers at this, uh, uh, as motivated as before. But once they reduce the nominal wages, they have to reduce the prices as well. Why? Because the competitiveness in the economy hasn't changed and therefore they cannot increase the markups. The markups have to remain the same as before. So once the wages go down, the prices have to go down. And this creates deflation in the economy. As you can see, we can use the wage setting curve and the price setting curve to explain the process of inflation. And out of this curve, we get the Phillips curve. And now you understand why the shape of these two curves are the same. But wait a minute, if you go through this story again, you might say to yourself, the workers were fooled. Remember, for instance, in the case of a positive demand shock at this new level of employment, the firms first started to pay higher nominal wages for their workers to keep them motivated. But at the same time, the firms increased their prices by 1% and generated inflation. So why did not workers expect this? Why did not workers expect a 1% inflation to begin with from the onset? This tells us that we need to augment our Phillips curve with the notion of expectations. The workers are no fool. If they expect 1% inflation in the future, a 1% increase in the nominal wages wouldn't motivate them. So we need to introduce the concept of expectation in the Phillips curve, and I'm going to do that in a separate video. But let's go back to this model. As a final step, let's integrate the Phillips curve with the aggregate demand curve, the Keynesian cross that we learned from the previous unit. So basically these three models, these three graphs tell the same story from, but from different perspective. So we're talking about the causes of inflation resulting from the demand side. Let's assume that we got a positive demand shock. The aggregate demand goes up, therefore the spending in the economy goes up. This, according to the Phillips curve, results in a higher level of employment and higher inflation in the short to medium term. Why that's the case? This is the underlying story. A higher aggregate demand leads to higher level of employment, higher nominal wages, therefore higher prices. The exact opposite happens when you got a negative demand shock. The aggregate demand goes down, the employment levels go down, the prices go down. Why? Because you have a negative bargaining gap. So Bill Phillips, very creatively shows all these relationships in a mechanical machine. He built a mechanical machine that captures the macro economy. What happens that you have a change in the level of aggregate demand and the spending, what's going to happen to the level of employment, inflation, and the economy as a whole. And you can find this very creative uh, machine, the Bill Phillips machine in Science Museum in London today.